here's what we now have and this is a left hand oriented Blake's hitch and we're going to connect this to a carabiner. Now the question is, is how do we want to do that? Uh, one of the standard methods is to form a figure eight on a bite here. Oh, sorry, caught the rope. But <clears throat> that makes a big clunky thing and we need this up tight to the carabiner so the carabiner is up near the knot. So what we're going to use is clove hitch. Did it the wrong way the first time. And it does matter. I'll show you why in just a second. Don't worry about this. I know it's got twists and everything else in it, but we will straighten that out, and I promise you. Now, why did I say I had to have the loops oriented a certain way? I want the one that goes to the hitch on this side and the one that goes to the rest of it on this side and that's what I've got so we've got that but we got all this twist in it and what, how do we deal with that we just find out which way untwist it and twist the rope in that direction this is a little trick by the way if you pull rope through and twist it as you go see how that untwisted now I'm gonna kinda snug up my Blake's hitch you see how much slack I pulled out of that this is one of, one of the reasons I like a clove hitch. I can take every bit of that out very easily and have a nice tight clove hitch next to my knot. And if I want it tighter, I can tighten it more. And soon it'll be about all you can get out of it. So what we have so far, we would have this carabiner here attaching to the ascender this one to the harness and now we need to get this link right here I'm sorry right here with that rope running through it so it will tend the knot and that's easy to do I happen to have my carabiner oriented so this will happen I can put that on there run this end of the rope through there and I have that tender um, carabiner so it will tend to knot. The last thing I want to do is put a uh, double overhand in here as a stopper knot and there's two reasons for that. For one thing if you're pulling down on this to gain some um, room from there to there you're just dropping a little bit you sure don't want to drop off the end of the rope. The second reason is if there's something about this just won't grab and hold, this knot will eventually get up to this thing. And even if it could pull through that screw link, which I don't believe there's a chance in the world it could, it still have to pull through the knot as well. So it's going to lock up and keep you from falling even if something goes wrong in the hitch. Well, let's see what that thing looks like. Okay, I've got it on the rope. I've changed out my left hand ascender to a, a right handed so I can keep this right hand here and when I stand up on my foot loops I don't have to turn loose with there but I gotta put some weight down here. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. So it's not too bad to make. The, of course the hard part is the uh, Blake's hit, get, hitch getting that all timed out. And uh, you don't need a whole lot of cord here to do that. I mean, you can see that's a that's a lot of uh, range of motion. And we're going to need something like that for this upper ascender, and there's a reason for that. When I get into climbing, I'll show you what that is. So there's one other thing we're going to have to do, and that uh, involves the foot ascender, so I'll get back to that now. Okay, let's talk about the last thing we need to do and why we need to do it. We need a backup on our foot ascender and realize I've got this raised up a bit and I've removed the uh, upper ascender just so we um, can see this a little bit better. 
if something should go wrong on the upper ascender or anything in that chain, uh, a complete failure or something, our feet would be in these loops. And when we fail, these would hold our feet and it would flip us upside down. I don't think any of us would like that. So what we need is another tie from here to our harness, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. I've already got a carabiner right here, so I'm just gonna put a piece of prussic cord. This is eight millimeter, and the knot I'm using is a bowling with a Yosemite finish on it. I need a little bit of uh, flex room to, to get around that. If I use a cinching knot, it's gonna uh, crimp on this and I don't want that to happen. On the other end, I've got an anchor hitch. Now, I'm gonna explain to you why I'm using that. This would be our saddle connection. This is that extra connection that goes into our saddle. So now if we fall, this thing's gonna catch us. Well, I don't know exactly what length I need here, so by using an anchor hitch, I can easily adjust this thing, shorten it or lengthen it readily, and there we have it. So I can make that as short as I want to very quickly, even after it's been under tension. And when I get it like I want it, I would probably uh, remove the anchor hitch and keep the same length using a um, scaffold knot and then I'd trim the rope so that it's got adequate uh, amount of tail. Um, the scaffold knot would uh, lock down a little bit tighter and be less uh, subject to uh, loading unloading cycles and rotation as you can see what just happened there. So it'd be a little bit safer to use the scaffold knot. One other thing you can do, you can, uh, let me see if I have a carabiner laying around here. Here we go. You can put a carabiner through there. And put the tether up here instead of down there. Uh, this is a Petzl Ascension, and it's got some qualifications about that. It's good for 8 to 13 millimeter rope, but when you make this connection, it, you can only use 10 millimeter or bigger rope to do this. I'm not sure what the reason is, but that's what the specs say. So you have to kind of know your equipment before you do something like that. But it's an option that's there if you want to use it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about. Some might question using 8 millimeter cord as a backup. Well, let's apply some numbers to that. This has 3,000, actually a little over 3,000 pounds of new brake strength. When you tie a knot in it, you're going to lose some strength. Let's say we lose 30% of the rope here, so we've got 70% of it left. And what that leaves us with is 2,100 pounds. Well, let's say I weigh 200 pounds. Well, if I divide my weight, 200 pounds, into the braking strength, which includes a knot, of 2,100 pounds, I have over a 10 to 1 margin of safety. So you can decide for yourself. The numbers say you got a 10 to 1 safety margin. If you weigh more than that, you might want to go to uh, 9 millimeter.